Okay, welcome back. We are now in video number two of traffic assignment, which is module six. And the topic here is pathfinding. Yeah, the primary requirement for traffic assignment procedure to work properly is you should have a solid and very fast algorithm which will help you find paths between pairs of TAZs and actually one TAZ to all other TAZs. And the big question is, are we going to need one path or multiple paths? My simplest answer is actually we will use only one path at a time. One path at a time. At a time. But to put it in context, we'll take a look at, uh, look at a practical situation. I know a guy who lives there, and he works at George Mason. And uh, his daily commute route is something like this. Okay? When you ask Google, the guy gave you three different paths, one like that. And if you look, look at all the one is the first one he routinely takes is 14 minutes the other one is 15 minutes and the third one is 16 minutes so which one shall he use well he always takes this but consider for the fact like there are some people living here and they work there and they take this constantly and this fellow happens to know that this particular route is always congested and he happens to go merrily that way. So the knowledge of the route helps him. Not necessarily because this is just sh shortest of all, but there are several other considerations he has, which is why he chose this. And the other considerations including the background traffic, which essentially is another pathfinding mechanism for a whole bunch of other people. So there is this interaction of trip makers on the network and that's what makes traffic assignment complex. So to have a cleaner map here, so people go that way and they go that way, you can go this way. Everybody is going in all directions has influence on this path. So how do you find this being the shortest path for him? How do you find that shortest path? It's not that easy and it's not that complicated also. So this other thing about shortest path is, what are we talking about? Is it shortest distance or shortest time or shortest cost? Usually we don't include shortest cost because in this area at least, unless you live in New Jersey, where every place you go, there is a toll road. So you will avoid tolls, and therefore the cost is a factor. And now we are also probably getting there. We have hot lanes. You avoid hot lanes, but right next to it, there, is, there are regular lanes as well. Uh, same, same goes in California, maybe shortest cost. Uh, I mean, the cost is a factor in, uh, in some parts of California. So what are the dependencies? So you have they may, the travel times may change by time of day, for example. So those are those are what I mean by dependencies. And how do you implement this in a computer? That, those are some of the questions we will answer here. Oh, well, probably not this part, not the part where the how it is implemented in the computer. That's beyond the scope of this class. Okay, let's do this. Uh, with an example, label correcting algorithm. It is a small network. What you see in the circles are the node numbers, and this is going to be your root. Root, why we call root, you will see in a bit. And what you see the numbers next to the link connecting two nodes is travel time on that particular link. And now you have to find paths from 103 to all other nodes in the network. Well, visually, you can pretty much do it. 
but we want to have a methodical way of doing this so that computer can understand and do it fast for you and remember it's called label correcting algorithm so let's do it okay here is your root the root is already in in the solution that means you're already there and from there where can you go you can go to 101 via this route or 106 via this route it takes you two units of time let's call this minutes okay two minutes to get 106 and three minutes to get to 101 and what we're going to do is label where you came from to 101 you came from 103 so you're going to put the back node your previous node back node predecessor node previous node whatever you want to call it let's call it back node the back node is 103 and the cost from root remember we are not talking about cost from previous node we are talking cost from root so you have to keep on adding as you go forward so this is three this is two and this guy you can reach in eight minutes 104 so all, all now now that you processed 103 this is taken off the processing node list all right now you have the ones in yellow i call it candidate nodes they're also the all the nodes combined they're called q or sequence list there are a whole bunch of names they go by let's call them candidate nodes so what you want to do is look at all the candidate nodes which are in yellow and pick the one that has the shortest travel time from root that is in this case 106 has the shortest travel time from the root and pop that meaning process that process this now now from six you, you so let's let's do that while uh, in the next slide so node six is popped and no, from node six you can get to 107 and 104 yeah you can get back to 103 but that's not what you started for right you don't want to get back to 103 you want to get to the other nodes so you go from 106 to 107 it's six minute travel time you already took two minutes from 103 so six plus two becomes eight so that's your new travel time to 107 the travel time to 107 from root remember this is number eight there says that is the travel time from the root on this road you have earlier these guys came from 103 to in eight minutes now watch this can you improve by going from 106 instead of going directly from 103 yes the answer is yes because this if you went from directly from 103 to 104 it took you eight minutes but if you went this way it took you six minutes so remove the previous solution so or correct the previous label see i'm using the word correct the previous label and draw the new label which is 1066 so this guy is done pop it now who else is there in the sequence list you have 107 104 and 101 who is the closest to the root the closest to the root this time is happens to be 101 i'm sorry well yeah 101 with, which came from 103 and travel time 3 now we process this in the next step there's 101 so 101 to 102 took 3 plus 4 which is 7 minutes and the back node to 102 is 101 and now 101 is done so we processed 101 we processed uh, 
first 106, then 101. And now, who is the closest? So 104 is the closest. So one of, from 104, you can get to 105. Again, 102, you can get there. But if you look at the time, you get 2 plus 4 plus 1, 7. If you go this way, also it is going to be 7. Now you have a decision to make. Do you want to keep 101 or you want to you do you want to keep 101 as your predecessor node or do you want to take this route? It's up to you. I I took it as 101. So similarly from 104 to 107. What is the best way? If you went this route, it will be 8 minutes. If you went this route, 2 plus 4, 6 plus 2, 8 minutes. So you could have gone this way also, and you could have put this as 104. Not necessary. I, I already got here from 106. I'm done, so I'm not improving on this by coming from 104. So the next step will be, I would process either 107 or 102. Which one? The closest one to root is 102. So you process 102, you get the picture. So if you keep... So we got here now. So actually this should have been colored blue because it's already processed. Now we got here. So you reached 105. I want to see my path from 105 to uh, 103 to 105. The way it works is you take the back node, go backward. So 104, you go to 104, and 104's back node is 106. You go that way. 106 back node is that one. You go that way. So you go this path, and you create this sort of a, uh, it, it's, it's the tree building exercise. Now you look at one of, let me erase this here, 102 to 103, you want to see which way the path built. So 102 you reached by 101, and 101 you reached from 103, I'm sorry, 102. Wait a minute, is that 103? Yes. And similarly, 107 you reached through 106, and 106 you reached through 107. So look at what I highlighted. All the nodes are reached, right? All the nodes in the network are reached. So, let me, and here is a cleaner picture of that. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is called a tree. Why it is a tree is, I kept calling this root, right? If you have root, and you have a tree like this, with all the stems. So none of the stems uh, cross with each other. So this is the root, and this thing is called tree, the shortest path tree, shortest path tree, and that is, that is how you build the shortest path. I told you earlier how you want to do f to find any path is, if you want to find path between 103 and 105, you start from 105, take the back node, uh, in this case 104, 104 is the back node. 104's back node is 106, so 106, and 106 back node is 103. So you get this path here, and once you collect the path nodes, you flip them. You flip them to get your real path from 103 to 105. So that is what you do in pathfinding. And this algorithm is so critical in traffic assignment, everything hinges on it. So here is a problem you will solve in the class. 
and just to give you an idea of how little complex <laughs> this is not even complex this is piece of cake you can do it manually so just to get a experience on doing uh, on using label correcting algorithm we'll do that in the class